today we journey with the hanged man and we are going to meditate on what is binding us on our spiritual journeys. And when we feel that we have bound ourselves in some way, we have to really acknowledge that we only change our own circumstance by changing our thinking and our awareness. Hello everyone, welcome to Reiki Radio. I am your host Yolanda and happy Saturday. We are on day 13 of our journey with the Major Arcana and the cards, they seem to be getting more and more interesting as we go. Um, I've never looked at them in this way. I mean, I've looked at the overview of the Fool's journey through the Major Arcana, but I've never really given myself the time to meditate on each in order for 22 consecutive days. So to do this journey um, has been very insightful and has caused a lot of self-reflection on my own spiritual journey and what I've gone through and what I'm going through even still. So as always, I do appreciate all of your feedback I love reading the emails about the insights that you're having, what's coming up for you, your interpretations of the cards, but I invite you again to join us in the Seeker Circle. Um, It's a free community where we talk about just different aspects of this entire journey. You know, people are there talking about Reiki, meditation, Um, someone posted a question about astral, um, doing astral work. And of course, we're talking about this journey as well. So if you would like to come share with us, just go to my website, uchi.com. That's Y-E-W-C-H-I.com. And I would love to get to know you there. So here we are on day 13, looking at the hanged man. And yesterday we were looking at, let me just look at my cards. Yesterday we were looking at the justice card and we talked about really looking in the mirror, looking at, you know, we looked at the wheel of fortune and where we are at based on our choices and really standing in the mirror yesterday to um, give ourselves an opportunity to deal with, you know, what it is that we hold and the result of our choices or our actions. And Now this card today, the hanged man, is kind of like, it reminds me of like um, uh, an initiation in in a way of this is where we come in the journey of finally saying, you know what, I am committed to this. I'm I'm going to do it. So this card in of itself uh, speaks to the energy of grace. It speaks to self-sacrifice. It is the energy of surrender. But there are so many elements in this card, even though it looks quite simple. So let's just get right into it. So first of all, we have the number 12. And the number 12, um, we can look at it, the digits individually, and then, you know, combined. So we have the number 1, which can be a symbol for new beginnings. And again, you know, maybe us making this choice of like, yes, this is what I'm going to do. Also, um, 1 is... A symbol of alignment being one with all that exists and really stepping into that knowing the number two can be um, the reasoning force behind what it is that we are doing so part of that even with this card we are asking ourselves like what even keeps us going on these paths you know it's not always easy but there is this inner knowing this inner calling, this inner pull, right? There's something, there's a reasoning force behind what it is that you're doing. And so we have the one and two together equal the number three, which we know is the number of creation. But this can also be looked at as birth, as in like our birth into this um, new awareness, this new understanding. It's like a rebirth, our spiritual birth, or like... um, the symbolism of, you know, baptism in a way. 
So the hanged man, we have been looking at the associated element and planet with each card. And the associated element with this card is water. And as we've learned throughout this journey, the element water is connected to our emotion, but also that inner stream of consciousness, our memory, our intuition. So there is a very intuitive aspect or going beyond the physical realm with this card. Then we also have the planet Neptune. And Neptune rules Pisces. And Neptune is all about dissolving the illusion of separation. It's the energy of mysticism, the energy of dreams, of also sacrifice. But when we look at the element and the planet, again, we get the sign Pisces. Now, I've talked to you before about how astrology I also enjoy because it shows us the same thing in a way. We could look at the 12 signs of the zodiac and have some more understanding about our spiritual evolution or our process of evolution, our evolution of consciousness through this life path, this life journey. And Pisces is where we where we end. It is the 12th sign of the zodiac. So there we have the number 12 again. And Pisces is also where we dissolve the illusion of separation. But it's also um, the 12th house in astrology is all about, you know, self-sacrifice. Now, what's interesting as well about this is the symbol for Pisces we know is a fish. And that speaks to the symbol of that also reminds us of the story of Jesus. And there is a symbol of a fish in association with him. But he is also a symbol of self-sacrifice. So when we look at this card today, and just in speaking of Jesus, the number 12 is also significant there. He had 12 disciples. But this energy of um, self-sacrifice. Now, when we look at the hanged man, if we look at this card, we see this beautiful golden light around his head. And that is meant to symbolize prophecy. And it's also um, to be a symbol of his spiritual enlightenment or his spiritual attainment. So one of the first things to recognize about this card is he already knew what was going to happen to him. Or he is well aware that he would be put into this situation, which looks, you know, uncomfortable, looks compromising. Now, there is a story in the tarot that, um, let's go back to the Hierophant, right? The Hierophant was the one, he was like the spiritual leader where we looked at tradition and what's being passed down to us. And in that card... It's thought of, like, once we get to the hanged man, the hanged man went his own way. He didn't necessarily go with tradition. He was on his own spiritual path. And so there was this mob or that collective mentality that came and hung him up on this tree by his foot. That's one way of looking at it. But if you look at how peaceful he is, and also this energy of prophecy with this card. He knew what was coming or we could also look at it as he is here intentionally. So this binding of him was not necessarily a physical manifestation of like these, this mob or the collective came together to um, hang him up by his foot. But that his mind, his Fear, his worry about going against the grain is what is actually binding him. Okay, so let's just clarify a little bit. Remember we had choice and belief or choosing to stick with, you know, what was fed or handed down to us again in the name of tradition with the Hierophant. So here again, we trusted ourselves be and even knowing that there may be some ridicule or shaming or disassociation with going against the collective agreement or going against tradition. And I'm sure so many of you can relate to this. You know, I hear stories all the time of people 
coming into their spiritual path and then having some fear around what their friends or family will think or having a hard time with the judgment of people in their lives or a lot of people um, feel uncomfortable being open about what it is that they believe because they know that it's non-traditional. So again, those kind of thoughts, those fears, those worries are what bind us. Now, sometime after the Hierophant, we moved on to the Lover's card. Actually, immediately after we moved on to the Lover's card. And in that card, we were looking at our own ethics. We were also really exploring ourselves more deeply. Our conscious mind, our subconscious mind, our feminine, our masculine energy. And we moved along and we got to the Strength card where we were considering how to access our own inner strength. And then we went on to the hermit where we considered our own inner wisdom. Now, here, again, the hanged man is gone through all of this and has chosen to go his or her own way without needing external approval. Now, here's the thing that's interesting. You know, there's a belief that we attain our fulfillment through our own spiritual awareness, through accessing truth, through our awakening, right? No one can do this for you. That's why we always say, practice your own practice. The answers are within. You hold your own inner wisdom. That's where we gain our fulfillment, our awakening, our understanding. Not necessarily through collective agreements of man, not necessarily through what is fed to us or passed down. Question everything. Access your own inner wisdom. Now the, a- the aspect of grace in this card is that even in the judgment that others may have, there's grace in forgiving them. There's grace in understanding that other people may have a different point of view. There's grace in understanding that other people have chosen different paths for their own spiritual journeys. All of our paths don't look the same. But in some way, we are all going through this process of waking up to who and what we are in our own time, in our own way. So there is grace in forgiving and understanding people who may condemn you or judge you. And, you know, when I think of that in looking at this card, um, it reminds me of Buddha. There's a, a series on Netflix called Buddha, and it's like 50-something episodes. And a while ago I watched it because I didn't know anything about him or his life. And so one of the things that really struck me is no matter what people did to him, no matter what they said about him, he was so peaceful. Like he was chill. Okay. Buddha was not tripping on what anyone else thought. He was at peace in his own knowing. He was at peace in his own wisdom. Now in this picture, the man is hanging from a T-shaped uh tree or it's called a I don't know if you pronounce it Tao or um, it's a very specific kind of cross that he's hanging from but it's spelled T-A-U and you can look it up because there's actually some um, history around that specific type of cross but him hanging here is a symbol of suspension suspension of the mind now how do we suspend the mind right? Meditation. And again, it goes back to that energy of Neptune, like going uh, beyond, you know, the illusion of separation in the material realm. When we allow ourselves to suspend the mind or have that experience of samadhi, we're giving ourselves another view of reality. So even him being upside down in this is like turning your world upside down or turning your world inside out which is often what it feels like 
when we go on these spiritual paths, everything we know, we begin to question or understand differently. There's this upheaval. And it can be very uncomfortable, of course. But remember yesterday when we were standing in front of the mirror um, with the justice card, we talked about that being uncomfortable. And, you know, discomfort isn't bad. (laughs) Discomfort really indicates that, you know, either we're going through some kind of change, we are letting go, something is moving. And here we're brought into surrender. Not fighting the change. I mean, look at the picture of this man. Here he is hanging from one foot and he's peaceful. There's no stress. There's no struggle here. His hands are behind his back. And there's no fighting. Because even in the discomfort of ridicule, even the ridicule that's just in his mind about what others may be saying or thinking of him, He still has faith. He still knows what is true for him. Even for us, sometimes it's not clear. You know, we just have this inner calling, this inner pull, and we are seeking. Even though the picture may not be clear for us, we know that what we are moving towards is more true, is more loving, is more compassionate, is more real. So here, let's just say that he is the one who has bound himself here by one little rope, (laughs) one foot. He's in a place of pause. He's put himself in a space of consideration. So here, instead of doing, instead of trying, he has resorted to just being. Being here, suspending the mind, going all the way into himself, beyond the ridicule, beyond the judgment. Now, the truth is that we're released from our own bondage when we finally understand and allow ourselves to be free. You know, we often are stuck or trapped by our fear or our need of approval or even a lack of faith in the background. You know, how many times on this journey, as much as you, there's an aspect of you that feels it's right and true, there is a part of us sometimes that does doubt along the way. Like, what in the hell am I doing to myself? Why am I doing this? We do this work, but sometimes fear and doubt does come in the background. It's just true. And that's where we start to become more aware of that mm, tug of war, or that push and pull between our ego and our higher selves, between our old ways of being and our new awareness. And we've talked about that on the show. Even though we know we still may have some shame around standing in our truth. Now, again, this is something very common on this path, you know, um, how many times, and it may have happened to you, where there is some shame or embarrassment about admitting, again, what you may believe in, admitting what you practice, admitting what you do, admitting or claiming yourself as being able to heal yourself, or uh, shame or embarrassment around claiming that you are intuitive. Something that is a natural ability, we're all intuitive, Whether or not we work on understanding our intuitive nature or not is a totally different thing. But yet there is some shame around these claims of being who and what we are naturally. So there is this freedom that comes in truth. Because we've allowed judgment from other people to restrict us in some degree. How can we fully move into our spiritual awakening or into full acceptance of ourselves if we have shame around who and what we are? You know, it reminds me of um, Paul Selig. He is a channel and he channels um, 
uh, a group of beings called the Mikhail Zadek, and he writes books. Uh, he literally just channels the books. The books are of his channelings. He doesn't edit them or any in any way. He channels and someone takes dictation and, you know, those are the books. And the books are quite amazing. I've talked about him on the show before. But one of the things that his guides say um, and is a big part of the teaching is that I know who I am. I know what I am. I know how I serve. And when you think about those words, if you say that to yourself, I know who I am. I know what I am. I know how I serve. There's freedom in that. There's freedom in truth. It's not dependent on someone else validating anything for you. You are claiming what you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, this even brings into consideration, is there wisdom outside of the collective point of view, outside of the external world, outside of what we may have been taught? Again, we always hear the wisdom is within, we have inner wisdom, go within, the answers are within. And I mentioned on one of the episodes a few days ago that saying or that idea that the answers are within is only annoying when we refuse to look within. <laughs> right? Okay, so back to the card. Um, one of the interesting things... Oh, I have the card upside down. One of the interesting things about this card is his the positioning of his legs. Uh, it looks like an upside down four. Now, the number four in the system of numerology could speak to the energy of stability, um, material, you know, the material realm being stabilized. And when we look at that from the aspect of a four being upside down, it could speak to the energy of feeling unstable or feeling ungrounded. Or again, allowing ourselves to be suspended and renunciating earthly matters or the material world and just going in. Now, very specifically in the Rider weight deck, which is the deck I'm using, his right leg is bound and his left leg is bent. So his left foot is pointing east. And that can be a symbol of consciously looking to learn these things, being consciously aware of this seeking out. Now, this is opposite and two other decks that are um, quite popular. So there's the Tarot um, de Marseille and there's also the Thoth Tarot deck. And in both of those decks, the leg is pointing in the opposite direction. And in those with the, point, the foot pointing west, it can be a symbol of an unconscious search. So either way, conscious or con conscious or unconscious, <laughs> we are seeking something, right? Seeking this awakening to who and what we are. Now the man is wearing a blue shirt and the blue is, you know, again, a symbol of water, the unconscious mind, the um, intuitive mind. And then we have red pants, which is the symbol of fire, which is actually like a contrast to water, right? Water puts fire out, but the red pants could be fire. So just in his outfit, we could look at this as the energy of knowledge and passion or the spiritual and the physical. But all in all, this card is kind of like being on the verge of a spiritual crisis, right? We've done all of this work leading up to this card of really looking at ourselves, of understanding the tools that we have available to us for our own transformation. We've looked at a lot of, of the responsibility that we have in this life. We looked at the accountability. We've looked at the hand that we've played in everything. We've come to know and understand that we have access to this inner wisdom and it's up to us to access it or not. So we get to this place in this journey where it does, it kind of feels like we go through a spiritual crisis. I 
called it um, Becoming Spiritually Undone. I did a whole episode about that in the past. But it's like, you know, you're aware of what you hold. And you're aware of the hand that you're playing. But what do you do about it now? It's uncomfortable when it's like you can no longer deny this awareness. You are fully aware and you can't unknow what you have learned on this spiritual path so far. But sometimes that's in conflict with what our life has been so far. What we have believed, what we have agreed to, what we have experienced, our relationships, our this, our that, all of our paths. All of this comes like in the light of our awareness and we start to recognize a discomfort of maybe I'm no longer aligned with my old ways of being. I'm no longer aligned with my old agreements, my old fears, doubts, patterns, all of it. So that's where we come to the energy here of even, you know, the self-sacrifice. What are you sacrificing for freedom of mind, for your spiritual pursuits? What are you letting go of? What aspect of the self is dying? You know, I told you that I call it, we go through death cycles on this journey. But a death is just about transition. It's not about a physical death. It's about, you know, like death consciousness. Like something in our, our awareness is transforming, is transitioning. We are changing. And I won't go into that too much now because we actually get to the death card tomorrow. So for today, I just want you to consider, you know, the development of your new perspective through this inner work that you're doing. You know, we get to a point where there really is no going back, right? And we can either stay in our discomfort or we can surrender to the unfolding. And again, we can look back at the other cards of what we've learned before. The strength that we have, the tools of the magician, the higher awareness of the high priestess, the openness of the fool. You know, the emperor, he and the empress together have really, you know, they've got, they're very familiar with almost like the governors of this material realm. And you think of that in your life. Yeah, we're pretty familiar with material. <laughs> we are very familiar with the physical life. But now here we are throwing in these spiritual aspects, these non-physical aspects of ourselves. We're becoming aware of these other aspects of ourselves that have been in the background. Yeah, that can be uncomfortable. But what a beautiful gift to ourselves when we allow ourselves to surrender and see how it all unfolds. So today, the hanged man reminds us to look at what is binding us. What is, you know, binding us in our mind? What is our, our imaginary mob, you know? What are the fears, the doubts that are holding us back or restricting us in any way? What comes up for you? You can come and share with us in the Seeker Circle. I will probably do a Facebook Live in the Seeker Circle um, within the next few days. So if you want to talk to me live about your journey, be sure to join us there. And again, you can come into the group through the Seeker Circle um, on Facebook, go to my website, uchi.com, that's Y-E-W-C-H-I.com, sign up for the newsletter, and you will get all that you need. So I hope that you all have a beautiful day. I will see you tomorrow, and remember to always journey in love.